The community got an update on the status of the Kona Community Development Plan on Tuesday evening here at the West Hawaii Community Forum held at the Makaeo Pavilion. These are regular gatherings also known as Kona Town Meetings and the topic changes each time. This time it was all about the CDP, its promises and problems. Established by Hawaii County's revised general plan in 2005, community development plans are intended to direct future growth and planning according to the will of the community. Although it has been debated in the recent past, most now agree that the CDP carries the force of law and is not a mere guideline for decision makers. There are other CDPs either already in place or under development for the island's other regions. The Kona CDP was the first to be adopted and so all eyes are on it to see how it weathers the realities of county planning. On Tuesday, a panel delved into the history of the Kona CDP, which included attorney Michael Matsukawa, longtime Kona CDP Action Committee member Ken Melrose, County Councilwoman Margaret Willey, and Bo Kahui, Executive Director for Lai Opua 2020. We spoke to Matsukawa about the challenges the Kona CDP still faces. I think people have lost sight of how the plan is actually working and in what way the plan needs to be updated or revised or most importantly, like Ken mentioned, funded financially to make it work. The financial side has always been a difficult thing because the total infrastructure cost is upward of 800 million and that was back in 2010. And uh, the mechanisms to raise that type of money uh, was difficult to identify but hopefully with the turnaround in the economy there might be mechanisms to uh, finance some at least not all of the critical finance uh, infrastructure called for in the CDP because if everyone uh, involved at all levels state federal and county get on the same page then the funding can be found. There is also another issue brewing in the Kona CDP boundaries. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is proposing to create a critical habitat for three species of rare plants in North Kona. The area being proposed includes seven units totaling approximately 18,766 acres. One of those units blankets Kealakehe, designated for urban growth in the CDP. When the CDP was being put together, uh, the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife really didn't participate and so uh, we had to just use the best available information that they had. After the CDP urban plan area was designated, then the U.S. Fish and Wildlife came into the picture and started to use the CDP as the reason for its intervention for critical habitat. In other words, if there had been, this is my view, if there had not been a CDP enacted, life would go on as usual on a case-by-case, parcel-by-parcel evaluation and review. When you read the regulation that came out, everything is premised on the CDP, designating this area as urban development, and so now they cast a very wide, wide net, 18,000 acres for three, three species. The designation could affect numerous development projects already underway at Kealakehe. Under federal rules, any development that plans to use federal funds will be directly impacted. The community has already begun to fight the designation. A large crowd packed the West Hawaii Civic Center in May to voice their opposition. Aole, not on the Queen's land. Never on our Queen's land. In the end, it will be our children that will suffer the consequences of your decision. I want to make it real short. They say, Aale Hiki, Aale Pono, you go home where you come from. Leave our people alone, leave our land alone. You annexed our islands. We're an endangered species. I am an endangered species. Are you going to declare the spot around me? endangered? Are you going to feed me, provide for me and my ohana? 
I don't think so. So leave us alone. Let us take care of the Aina. Let us be the policemen of our own lands. We've lost enough already. Uh, there's tensions. Uh, there's a process to work through. Hopefully we'll convince them that there are options, you know. I know the congressional delegation has been informed and they're starting to make efforts to. And I think Hanabusa recently wrote a letter to uh, <coughs> uh, Fish and Wildlife asking them to collaborate with the local planning communities. There was also a landmark case for CDP law under discussion at Tuesday's Kona Town meeting. A judge recently ruled that the County Planning Director and Board of Appeals violated the Kona Community Development Plan and failed to uphold the county's duty to protect natural resources when it awarded a development permit for a valued stretch of Waikaku'u Forest. Councilwoman Brenda Ford tried to protect the land through the Public Access and Open Space Fund. The lands have ancient trees on them. The estimated uh, age of these trees is 700 years old, and some may be as old as 1,000 years old. Um, there's the endangered uh, hoary bat. Uh, we've got four endangered birds that nest and uh, live in this area. Um, we have several different pieces of pieces, several different plants. Um, a Prichardia palm is probably on the property. It looks like it from the aerial views that it might be. We have these very ancient Ohia lehua trees that are greater than six feet in, in uh, diameter. So we need to preserve all of those things. I talked to one of the botanists at, at UH in Hilo, Dr. Patrick Hart, and I told him the size of these trees, which are bigger than the ones he's been researching on the east side of the island. And he said these trees might be, might be in the running for the oldest, oldest angiosperms, that is a flowering tree on the planet. They'll be in the running for it. We don't know if they'll make it. Patricia and Richard Missler, who live next door, sued to protect the land from development. Matsukawa was their attorney. The county charter had um, as an underlying principle the constitutional public trust doctrine as the base and that same provision is inserted and embedded in the uh, Kona CDP as well. And so uh, the Missler case was one where the county took the position that the uh, public trust doctrine was uh, something that was discretionary, that had no binding effect. The court ruled otherwise, and it's coincidental that one week Within the same week that Judge Ibarra handed down his ruling in the Kona case, the Intermediate Court of Appeals handed down its decision on a Kauai case involving the public trust doctrine and the court upheld the doctrine. So from one side of the state on Kauai to the other side of the case state in Kona, you had two courts upholding the public trust doctrine in its actual application in a real permit case. And uh, CDP for Kona, uh, fortunately Judge Ibarra felt was, uh, had to embrace, uh, excuse me, that uh, Kona CDP is grounded on the public trust doctrine and therefore had to be enforced. On Tuesday, Councilwoman Willie reported that the Corporation Council will still try to appeal the decision. The news does not come as a surprise or disappointment to Matsukawa. Oh no, uh, who knows what will happen, you know. You take everything one day at a time.